step forward and repeat the phrase you've been given. Understand? Welcome to Get Writing, everyone. I'm Dr. Stavros Halvatsis. Today, we're looking into one of the most intriguing storytelling techniques, that of the unreliable narrator. Let's get started. What better way to study the ins and outs of creating an unreliable narrator than by looking into that masterpiece of narrative deception, The Usual Suspects. One of the key reasons the unreliable narrator in The Usual Suspects works so well is because of how the film establishes Verbal Kint's credibility early on. The audience sees him as a harmless, physically weak con man, someone who seems incapable of orchestrating the elaborate crimes described. Fuck who did it. What I want to know is who's the gim. He's okay. Says you. How do I know that? What about a pretzel man? What's your story? His name is Verbal. Verbal Kent. Verbal? Yeah. Roger, really? People say I talk too much. His seemingly unassuming demeanor lowers our incredulity, making us more susceptible to his lies. For example, when Verbal relates the mysterious figure of Kaiser Soje, it is with a sense of awe and apprehension that seems genuine. He lets the last Hungarian go. He waits until his wife and kids are in the ground, and then he goes after the rest of the mob. He's not trying to convince the police or audience of his insight. Can I get some coffee? In a while. Let's talk about the lineup. I'm really thirsty. I used to dehydrate as a kid. One time it got so bad my piss come out like snot. I'm not kidding, it was all thick and I'll get your fucking coffee. This makes him relatable and trustworthy, a vital component of the unreliable narrator. Without this initial credibility, the final twist wouldn't have had nearly the same impact. An unreliable narrator thrives on misdirection, guiding the audience to focus on the details that seem important, but ultimately obscure the truth. The usual suspects succeeds because it peppers the narrative with red herrings. I work for Kaiser Soze. Consider how Verbal introduces the idea of Kaiser Soze. The story of this somewhat mythical figure is filled with enough detail to make it seem real. The Hungarians knew Soze was tough, not to be trifled with, so they let him know they meant business. Yeah! These details are so outrageous and dramatic that they divert suspicion away from the possibility that Verbal himself could be Soze. Soze looks over the faces of his family, then he showed these men of will what will really was. The audience is so busy trying to piece together the puzzle of Soze's identity, it overlooks the inconsistencies in Verbal's story. This misdirection is the key to keeping the audience engaged and off balance. An unreliable narrator doesn't only tell a story, however. He or she shapes the reality within the story. The usual suspects does this brilliantly. Verbal's narration controls what the audience sees and understands. Throughout, we witness scenes that are tied directly to Verbal's narration. He lets the last Hungarian go. He waits until his wife and kids are in the ground, and then he goes after the rest of the mob. We see what he describes, but these scenes are not objective truths. They are colored by his perspective. For example, the detailed flashbacks of the heist and the events leading up to it are presented as facts, when in reality they are fabrications designed to construct a believable narrative. The film's cinematography supports this narrative, blending Verbal's words with visual cues that make his lies feel real. We are drawn into the fabricated reality, which is essential if the final twist is to pack a punch. A convincing, unreliable narrator can get away with telling outrageous lies if those lies are consistent within the story's framework. Verbal's story contains inconsistencies, but they are subtle enough to be overlooked or explained away by the complexity of the tale. Verbal makes seemingly insignificant mistakes like misremembering details or offering somewhat conflicting accounts of the same event. These inconsistencies are blamed on the stress or the trauma of the events he's recounting. For instance, the coffee cup moment where Agent Kujan suddenly realizes that many of the details in Verbal's story were lifted from objects in the room is indeed a revelation. I'm Mr. Kobayashi. 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 Tell me every last detail. I work for Kaiser Soze. Convince me. Convince me. The most crucial aspect of an unreliable narrator is properly managing the final revelation, 
the moment when the truth is unveiled and the audience realizes it has been deceived. This revelation needs to be shocking, yet believable in hindsight, a feat the usual suspects pulls off flawlessly. The climax, when verbal Kent walks out of the police station, his limp disappearing and the pieces of his deception falling into place, is a stroke of genius. The montage of the items in the office used to fabricate his story, Kobaishi's name, the details of the story, unfold in quick succession, leaving the audience stunned. This revelation is powerful because it is earned. It is the culmination of every lie, every misdirection and every deception that came before it. We are left feeling off balance, not just because we have been deceived, but also because how brilliantly the scene has been done. To sum it all up then, to have a shot at writing a brilliant, unreliable narrator, establish his or her credibility from the start. Master the craft of misdirection, manipulate perspective to shape reality, maintain a sense of consistency through sleights of hand and deliver a climactic revelation that brings it all together. He's gone. Underground. Nobody's ever seen him since. He becomes a myth, a spook story that criminals tell their kids at night. Well, that's it for now. If you enjoyed this video, consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons and leaving a comment to share your thoughts and to help the channel grow. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.